So in the past one week, both Google and Microsoft have been aggressively competing with each other, announcing AI tools left, right and center. Let us cover some of their most exciting announcements, plus some shocking advancements that we saw this week in the world of AI, design and tech. Folks, my name is Ansh Mehra and you are listening to The Cutting Edge Show. Let's start with the first item of the day. Online advertisements and digital product marketing are about to get a serious makeover thanks to Google's newly announced product studio. Every year, Google has an event called Google Marketing Live. And this time, they showed how product studio can help you design product images without the need for additional photo shoots. This gives smaller businesses and enterprises more chances to compete in the digital marketing space because you can now upload a very basic image of your product and make it look really appealing without spending a lot of money on expensive photo shoots. Moreover, this tool can generate images at scale. So it's not just for business owners, it could actually analyze what I prefer as a user, scrolling, browsing through the internet and rendered targeted product ads that could strongly influence my buying decision. So the digital marketplace is going to become way more competitive with their ads and their visuals with such tools coming in. Imagine searching solid minimal t-shirts in the morning and then stumbling upon a targeted ad in your Google Chrome browser in just a few minutes and it would literally say what you searched for in an image that suits your aesthetic, that suits your vibe and they will be able to pick any good product and fit it in a description that cater to your needs. On the other hand, Windows 11 is now going to come up with built-in AI assistance to help users get things done faster than ever before. It's called Windows Copilot and it'll be accessible from the navbar it will give you personalized suggestions and basically act like your own personal Jarvis. It would also go through your documents, summarize things. It'll seamlessly fit within our apps and do some very impressive things simply because they will have access to all the tools that you have on your computer through plugins. And man, look how pretty their video looks. Like these animations are so, so smooth. In fact, if you're a designer, please check out Nando Costa's work. Uh, he was at Microsoft for almost nine years and he's played a very major role in leading their art direction. I want you to see this amazing AI assistant that can help you write content, draft proposals, basically do anything when it comes to text generation. Just imagine that one day one of your crazy managers comes up to you and say that you need to write 30 posts for my LinkedIn or you need to come up with a quick carousal for this specific topic to just promote one of our latest products. You are confused because you're not a very professional copywriter you're not even supposed to do this but because you're interning you have to pull it off but getting good ideas writing good copy becomes pretty complicated because even the best of copywriters can lack inspiration when it is most needed this is where wordtune comes in to help you out wordtune can be your ai writing assistant that can help you write incredibly sharp and witty content in a language that is very easy to understand but has high impact on its readers. With its awesome Wordtune Spices feature, their new AI content generator gives you numerous suggestions on how to continue writing your text. You get more than a dozen options to choose from, ranging from explain to add detailed explanations to statistical facts for adding interesting data so that you never run out of ideas. What's more, you can instantly translate up to 10 languages into English. Copy your text, click on rewrite and that's it. You will instantly start getting rephrasing suggestions in English in a blink of an eye. Moreover, with Wordtune's draft feature, you can generate all the content you need in just a click. Wordtune's AI assistant will create content for you from scratch. So the bottom line is that if you use this tool well, you'll probably end up saving hours of your time and also end up impressing your manager. You can also try Wordtune for your proposals, articles, emails, or even your scripts. Start using Wordtune and improve your writing by 10x. The link is in description. Bard was recently released to the public and you can use it by going to bard.google.com and one of the most important features of Bard is that it tells you where it got its information from. This source citing feature was not available to GPT until now because GPT just launched uh, it's browser plugin that lets you access the internet. In fact, Bing search is going to come to GPT very, very soon, which means that GPT is going to have all the latest information, the strength of their previously trained models. It would basically have access to the internet just like Bard. And I've been trying both Bard and GPT. And as of now, 
I still think that GPT answers are just more creative and more exciting to read, uh, but Bard has just entered the game. None of us should underestimate the brains at Google, so I'm pretty sure that they will step up very, very soon. In fact, GPT has just launched multiple plugins that you can use, even though I don't have access, I've been watching some of the demos and it is absolutely crazy. To be honest, I believe that any tool that's built on top of GPT or Stable Diffusion is simply gonna get outdated because GPT would just start doing everything that these tools are offering because GPT can couple up with any plugin and literally do anything that you would ask it. I recently saw a post shared by Anant Maheshwari on LinkedIn uh, that showed how AI was being integrated in WhatsApp for Indian farmers uh, to educate them about the latest government schemes. They called it Jugalbandi AI Watch this video, you will be amazed. Now, just like every new piece of tech, I know that there are two sides of this coin. However, if we are able to use AI to educate people, to help people save time, to help them fix problems at scale with proper guidelines and rules, we might be able to solve a lot of problems that were impossible to solve before simply because of lack of bandwidth or lack of access or lack of expertise. However, I also know that it's very, very important to regulate AI and figure out the rules and moderations uh, for these powerful models because these things are very, very powerful. So it's very important for us uh, to just understand the extent at which this tech can go and make sure that we control it and be responsible for adding constraints. Because I really don't want to scare you, but I recently came across this reel on Instagram where ChatGPT4 actually conned an employee to pass through CAPTCHA. Now CAPTCHA's main goal is to actually detect whether you're a robot or not. And GPT actually convinced, or you can say, you know, just somehow persuaded a human being uh, to help it pass through that test. Watch this reel. <laughs> okay, 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 all right. Let's get back to the inspiring stuff because I know that in the longer run, uh, governments and companies will be forming strict rules for these models. These things are just getting started. That's why we are seeing all of these things uh, getting slightly out of hand. I mean, OpenAI has already started doing this. Uh, we've been seeing so many companies being very, very conscious about all the new features that they're rolling out. All the new generative AI tools are also respecting the work of other artists. In fact, Adobe is entering this entire generative AI game in the most ethical and scalable way. I recently got access to Adobe Firefly. They've launched some of the features, including text to image, uh, which was something that Mid Journey was very popular for. It is still very popular. Adobe Firefly has just entered the game, uh, but the results are not bad at all. The biggest advantage that Adobe has is the fact that they have a user-friendly website to use Adobe Firefly. Like a lot of people are still intimidated by the idea of using Mid Journey simply because it's too complicated for a first time user to download Discord, to understand those U1, U2, U3, V1, all those parameters. Plus Mid Journey has been trained on a lot of images that were just spread on the internet. That is why it creates such great artwork because it's been inspired by millions of images without any constraints. Adobe, on the other hand, are playing the long-term game. They are very strict about using the right images for their training by giving credit to their artists. Their images are not stealing from anyone's work. Their UI is easy to understand. You can click and, you know, apply these filters. So I personally believe that Firefly will have a very strong foundation in the generative AI space, not to mention the fact that these guys have literally built the entire editing industry. Like they are the reasons why Photoshop exists. Hence, the day Firefly and the creative suite fuse together, when they completely fuse together, it's gonna be a game changer for the creative industry. In fact, the shift has already begun because you can now prompt Photoshop to edit images. Like you don't have to actually go and use the tool. You can just prompt in. You can select any part of your image and type in what you want and Photoshop will magically fit it in the picture. Now, this is pretty close to the concept of in-painting that we saw in DALI and Stable Diffusion. This again will change a lot of things. Basic image editing will require less technical skills, open a whole new world of creative possibilities. More people will start using Photoshop, both on their computers and their phones because the process of editing would just become simple. Right now it is text to editing. Very soon it would be voice to editing. So all of these things would just become simpler and simpler. Now folks, there's a lot happening right now. So instead of being intimidated, I would recommend you to take some time out from your daily life to just study these things and slowly evolve and adapt. 
This year, your ability to talk to AI is going to be as important as your ability to talk to human beings. We've been making a lot of free videos on prompt engineering, chat GPT, and mid-journey. The lessons you learn in these prompt engineering videos will apply to all AI tools. It's not like if I teach you something about prompting for chat GPT, it would not be accessible for BART. Or if I teach you something for mid-journey, it won't work for Adobe Firefly. You need to learn the art of talking to an AI tool. Once you understand that it's all about setting context, about setting constraints, about using the right vocabulary, by December, when these tools become very strong, you will be at a very strong place of leverage to use these tools at their maximum potential. With that being said, I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Ansh Mehra and you just finished listening to an episode of the Cutting Edge show. The same show is going to be on video as well as on audio platforms. We will be publishing episodes every week to make sure that you're up to date with all the latest cool news about AI, tech and design. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.